If there's one hard lesson we've learned over the last two and a half years of this pandemic, it's that here in the United States, public health has been politicized by the right. Take COVID vaccinations. Last year, the Kaiser Family Foundation found Republicans were the most vaccine-hesitant demographic. Nearly 30% said they didn't want one, compared to just 5% of Democrats who said the same. Their hesitation was even bigger among rural Republican men. 35% of them didn't want to get vaccinated. It's almost no wonder that at the height of last year's deadly Delta surge, just months after that Kaiser survey, we saw the phenomenon called red COVID. As the New York Times put it, conservative communities that voted for Trump had been, quote, walloped by the highly contagious Delta variant. Healthcare analyst Charles Gabba found a direct correlation between counties that voted for Trump and high death rates from COVID. And how come? Well, pushing unproven medications, banning vaccine mandates, banning mask mandates, resisting any safety precautions, really, against the virus. That has been the MO of the Republican Party. We've talked about the deadly consequences of all this on this show repeatedly. But let's look at one state in particular where the effects of partisan, Republican-led public policy has had such devastating consequences, where the medical community is still reeling. In January 2021, Montana welcomed a new Republican governor, Greg Gianforte, a Trump acolyte, an anti-masker, and a man who gained national attention after physically assaulting a reporter from The Guardian in 2017. Jan Forte pleaded guilty to misdemeanor assault. He was fined and ordered to attend anger management, but got no jail time. Now, it's important to know who Jan Forte's predecessor was, Democratic Governor Steve Bullock. As governor during the start of the pandemic, Bullock created a COVID-19 task force, he closed public schools, implemented a stay-at-home order, a mass mandate, and capacity limits on indoor gatherings. The usual safety precautions that Donald Trump and Republicans across the country were getting riled up about, including Jan Forte. By the time he came into office almost a year into the pandemic, he was ready to show just how different he'd be from Bullock. Well, I've, I've always believed that we're better off with uh, personal responsibility rather than mandates. Within a week of being in office, we removed the capacity limits uh, and the uh, uh, the other restrictions, the hours of operations restrictions that were on business. The next step is to remove this mass mandate. Jan Forte appointed his own new COVID-19 task force, 21 people, including a Best Western operator, the owner of a pizza restaurant and casino and other business and school leaders. No one from the state's public health agency who had been actually leading the COVID response for the previous year. In May 2021, Jan Forte signed what a new ProPublica investigation into Montana calls the nation's most extreme anti-vaccination law. The only state at the time that banned even private employers from having vaccine requirements for employees. Jan Forte also signed another bill restricting the authority of local public health agencies to impose their own COVID-19 restrictions. Then, a couple of months later, the Delta variant emerged. Think about the context. A deadlier strain of the COVID-19 virus is spreading... The Republicans in charge have banned any agency or local government from putting safety precautions in place. And the anti-vaxxer climate gets its grip on Montana's residents. NBC News was there last September, reporting on just how bad it had gotten. The ICU at Billings Clinic in Montana is nearing 150 percent capacity, and the hospital is asking the National Guard for help. I would not wish this stuff out like my worst enemy at all. Patrick Bershia has been here more than a week. He's just 24 years old. Do you regret not getting the vaccine? Absolutely, I 100% regret it. During our brief interview, oh, sorry, deep breath, deep he paused to catch his breath, but he wanted to continue so he could counter what he called misinformation. That the vaccine was not a real vaccine, that uh, it was like a tracking chip the government was trying to use on us. That's what's so frustrating to healthcare workers here. We're here to do our part, but it feels like those choosing to refuse vaccine aren't helping us. 
ProPublica's investigation focuses on St. Peter's Health, in particular a hospital in Helena, Montana's capital. On September the 1st, 2021, a long list of St. Peter's doctors and nurses wrote a letter to Montanans, pleading with them to get vaccinated in the absence of any encouragement from state officials. ProPublica reports staffers faced verbal, even physical abuse, often over intake questions about vaccination status and wearing masks. One nurse found shocking stuff in her Facebook messages, including one commenter who said, he wanted to scalp me and my family, the nurse told ProPublica. Another nurse, Vicky Ray Bird, said almost overnight nurses went from heroes to zeros. The hostility towards healthcare professionals, towards science, towards public health policies that would save lives had real consequences across America and especially in Montana. A study from Brown University and Harvard School of Public Health, among others, found that an estimated 1,464 COVID deaths in Montana, one of every three, could have been prevented if every eligible adult had been vaccinated. 1,464 deaths, preventable deaths. When ProPublica reached out to Jan Forte for their investigation, he declined requests for an interview. In fact, his press secretary said he wouldn't, he wouldn't respond to biased gotcha questions about the governor's actions, which she said have been widely covered. On this show, I've talked about the need to hold lawmakers accountable, those whose leadership during the pandemic helped lead to preventable deaths, from Donald Trump down to state and local officials. In Montana, there's still a legal battle. Several state medical groups sued Montana's Attorney General and Commissioner of Labor and Industry, challenging the ban on vaccine mandates, even in medical settings. This past March, a judge blocked a portion of the law, saying it would cause irreparable harm to private physicians and healthcare facilities. But the fight isn't over. The nurse I mentioned earlier, Vicki Bird, her organization, the Montana Nurses Association, is part of that suit. She told ProPublica that a state lawmaker warned her group on Facebook to drop the lawsuit, saying... Don't mess with the will of the legislature. So where is that lawsuit now? How have nurses and healthcare providers in Montana been dealing with the backlash against them? And what lessons can we learn from this state story of what happens when politics trumps public health? Registered nurse and president of the Montana Nurses Association, Vicki Ray Bird, joins me now. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Let me just start by asking, how would you describe last year in particular as a nurse in Montana dealing with COVID and especially the Delta surge last year? Thanks for having me. And yeah, describing the scenario and the Delta surge, it was really disheartening to many nurses because we're science-based, we're evidence-based, and we're encouraging those who were able to, to get vaccines, no different than when we give you your tetanus vaccine, if you step on a rusty nail. And because of the misinformation and the disinformation, we know it costs many of our Montana communities their lives because of that misinformation. And it emotionalized it and uh, politicized a vaccine that we should be yes. so proud that we have. You know, we have smart researchers and epidemiologists and public health you people and you mentioned these other vaccines, the non-controversial yeah. ones, I think we can say. How controversial have they become? Has anti-vaxxer thinking gripped more and more Montana residents? Is it now not just opposition to the COVID vaccine, but other vaccines? Right. And I think that's where the misinformation is. They don't realize that this law, House Bill 702, signed into law, includes all the vaccines, not just COVID. Many still, many nurses... Many communities still think it's only about the COVID vaccine. So we continue to try to be consistent in our communications and let everyone know, nurses and our communities, that this is about all vaccines. You would not want your daughter or granddaughter going in to have a baby and being cared for by someone that hasn't been vaccinated against the measles, mumps, rubella, all of them. So it's a huge public health issue and the education has to get out there. You told ProPublica that you remember thinking at one point, and I quote, I don't go to the governor's office for my colonoscopy. Certainly you shouldn't go to the governor's office to have him lecture you on what immunizations you should get or shouldn't get. Um, how detrimental was it, in your view, when Republicans took over the leadership of your state in 2021, specifically the GOP public health strategy, if you can even call it that? Right. It was 
um, what's the right word? It was very detrimental because you have those that are not healthcare, nursing, physician, public health experts talking about how to manage your health. And when you're getting your information from those that are not qualified to speak to healthcare or public health issues, you're gonna you're gonna suffer some consequences. And many did. Many it cost their lives, as you heard that young man on the tape earlier. Yeah, I regret it because of the information. You know, he's he's in uh, some dire need, and we lost some very young and very young patients in our communities because of that misinformation. One had passed away. He was in his 30s. The next day, 12 to 14 of his friends went out and got immunized. It shouldn't take that wow. for us to, you know, yeah. do the proper public health measures. You've been part of this lawsuit with the Montana Medical Association and other medical groups against the state's enforcement of its vaccination discrimination law. Where does that lawsuit stand right now? Are you going to get the result you were hoping for? Is that legal fight still ongoing? The legal fight is still ongoing. Um, I gave a deposition a couple of weeks ago, so I think the brief summary is due the middle of this month. But there is a trial that say trial date set. I think it's October 24th. We're hoping it doesn't come to that, and uh, we're just awaiting um, some more feedback on that. But we've given all of our information and data, and now we're waiting for the judge to make a ruling, whether he makes a ruling or we go to trial.